Tony Robbins there telling us and informing us about the importance of goal setting. Indeed, setting goals and planning is the recipe to a compelling future. That being said, good morning and welcome to the conversation on your digital first Pan African News Network, TOS Television. I am Sagir Ibrahim. And my name is Ade Suwasi. Good morning and thank you for joining us on the show this morning. Good morning, Sagir. Good morning, Adisra. How are you doing? Why black? I think you're going to have to leave me alone whenever we are black. No problem. Honestly. No problem. <laughs> All right, so we move straight into stories and development from across Africa, starting with Sudan. So Sudan has reached an agreement on Sunday between its government and its tribal protesters to allow the resumption of export of landlocked South Sudan's crude oil via a terminal on the Red Sea, Sudanese officials say. And in Mali, Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov said Mali has asked a private Russian military company to help it fight against insurgents. They are combating terrorism, incidentally, and they have turned to a private military company from Russia in connection with the fact that, as I understand, France wants to significantly draw down its military component, which was present there, Lavrov said on said of Mali's junta during a news conference on Saturday at the United Nations. Moving away from Mali to um, Ivory Coast, Sir Simon Bagbo, Ivory Coast former First Lady, attended a launch event of a political movement to support creating her own political party for the 2025 presidential election. She emphasized her vision of a strong, sovereign, reconciled, modern and prosperous Cote d'Ivoire, hammering out the national motto, Union Discipline Work. What does it remind you of? Dare to dream. <laughs> Goal setting is the secret to a compelling future. Tony Robbins said this. Ah. She's setting a recipe to a compelling future. Ah, okay. This is quite similar to what happened in Nigeria, I think, last week, where you have a um, prominent people decided to set mm, up. Okay, a, yes, that's yeah, the rescue that is, Nigeria, yeah, rescue Nigeria, Nigeria project, project, yeah? Yes, they were, we're trying to rescue you from both ruling parties. That look, these people have been messing things up for a while now, and then we have, we're coming up with this party, you know, to, to, well, to set well, things we'll, straight. Well, we'll always see on the eve to elections where people will come from different places yeah. claiming to be the messiah exactly. and savior of the people. Uh -huh. So let's just watch and see how everything unfolds, because right. I know most times, it ends up being a different story after the election, but then let's hope. Watch okay. and see. That's, that's, that's what we can do, really hope. So just get your PVC and vote. Come, you know, when, when the time to, to vote to, for 2023, uh, the presidential and the gubernatorial elections come come to be. All right, that's it for Development Across Africa segment on the conversation. Going to bring you COVID-19 update from across Africa right now. And after that, we'll be going over to the big story. You're also watching the conversation on your digital first Pan African News Network, TOS Television. And you could be part of the conversation by connecting with us on our various social media handles on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at TOS TV Network. You could also watch the conversation via our website at www.tostvnetwork.com as well as watch a recap of the conversation and other programs by TOS TV Network on our YouTube page at TOS TV Network. Don't forget to like and subscribe. It is the Big Story segment of the conversation this morning and its focus is on the World Pharmacist Day, the role of pharmacists in promoting health. And we have with us in the studio someone who has featured on the conversation on several locations and he is no other person than Dr. Pharmacist Sunday Olatunde. Good morning, sir. Uh, uh, good morning. Sagi, thank you. Yes. Good and uh, good morning to Adesio. Good for morning. It's good to have you here again. Time. Yes. Yeah. You're, 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 you're good morning to the viewers all over the world. You're, you're welcome, sir. So, sir, on Saturday, the 25th of September, was the World Pharmacist Day, and it has a theme, pharmacy always trusted for your health. I just want you to tell us about the significance of, um, you know, this day, as well as the theme. Oh, thank you very much. Uh, it is a day designated by the Federation, uh, International Federation of uh, Pharmacists. Mm. We officially call that uh, body uh, as uh, international pharmaceutical federation, mm -hmm. FIP. 
It's a day designated to celebrate uh, the pharmacists all over the world. Celebrating them and celebrating the role they played in the health sector. Uh, it has been well touted that pharmacists are unsung heroes. Mm. They are people who actually make possible health care provision all over the world. Mm. But they are not as celebrated as compared to the other healthcare professionals in the setting. Mm. So the uh, International Pharmaceutical Federation made a certain day, which is 25th of September, to celebrate the importance of pharmacists in healthcare setting. And we have chosen the theme this year of uh, pharmacists always trusted for your health. Mm. And uh, we believe that our role has been hinged on the fact that the society and the community that we serve actually trust us. They trust us based on some certain parameters. Uh, parameters of a positive relationship that have been built over time. The parameters of a competency in what we do. And the parameters of a consistency. You cannot, uh, you know, be given trust. You earn trust. And this trust has been earned based on these three parameters. The parameters of positive relationship, like I mentioned, competency and consistency. And that is what the theme is all about. And that pharmacist to be celebrated at this particular designated time is to sing uh, to high heaven what the pharmacists are, the role they play in the health setting, and the importance, what and what they have and how to become a pharmacist. Okay. That's what the whole day is all about. All right. So, sir, I want to ask now, um, I just want to zero it down on Nigeria. Now we've talked about globally how pharmacists are unsung heroes. Yeah. And I'm afraid the same is replicated here in Nigeria. However, we've seen the role pharmacists have played, you know, <clears throat> in the different epidemics and pandemics we've, you know, witnessed in the last, say, decade, mm -hmm. the last 10 years, be it the SARS, MERS, COVID-19 itself, you know, and... Very recently, even cholera and Lassa fever outbreaks we've, we've experienced, even in Nigeria. So the question I want to ask is, why don't we see, you know, pharmacists giving this push that we've been seeing doctors across board, resident doctors, consultants and the likes, giving, you know, and putting pressure on the government to, to do the needful to ensure that there's a better welfare for doctors, you know, all across, all around. Oh, thank you for this very important uh, question. You see, our practice, first and foremost, is not only hinged on government and pharmacist relationship. Mm. In many cases, we practice in a private setting. Okay. And when your practice is related to private setting, you demand for your right from the private organization that employed you. Mm. But in terms of uh, the comparison, we also know that in many cases, apart from a section of pharmacists that you meet in the community, so many places where you don't even know them at all. For example, in the case of COVID-19 and the production of vaccine, you know that that's the primary function of a pharmacist. Yes. When you are trying to discover vaccine, you may need the other healthcare professionals to come with you, but you are the main stakeholder. You may need to exploit the skills they have, mm. but the main stakeholder in the production of that vaccine is the pharmacist. When we do that, nobody knows that we are working. Mm -hmm. Until when we now make it available to people, we we'll go to facilities, healthcare facilities, to educate uh, the medical doctors, to educate the nurses, to educate the dental surgeons, to educate the veterinary doctors, if they are the one to have the, uh, last the use of the medications. When we do that, we go to the exit point where we actually be the one to give the medicine. But in all of this, nobody has actually seen the pharmacist being visible. When they go to the consulting clinic, they see the doctor and they feel the doctor is their hero because in this case, he's the one who provided the, you know, uh, the solution. However, the pharmacist has provided the solution to the doctor, but nobody knows. Mm -hmm. So in that case, we, uh, because, uh, you know, people that have become our leaders, they emanate from our society. And whatever you know from the society level is actually what will be your orientation, even when you become a leader. If you feel that a pharmacist is not doing enough, mm -hmm. when you become a leader, that's the mindset you will carry. Yeah. That is going to actually determine the kind of signature you put down for anything at all. If pharmacists make proposals, because you are not seeing them to be that important, you may not prioritize it. But when you go out to the clinic or to the hospital, you meet a doctor, and the doctor gives you paracetamol for your headache, and you feel the doctor has done 
all that is is required but you wouldn't know that the pharmacist is the one in the first place that provided the solution to you the doctor is just a conveying a kind of a pipe to the, uh, the of the solution to you so you see your doctor as the hero but you never think that the pharmacist is the first hero he actually has provided the solution to the doctor before the doctor will actually you know give the solution back to you okay. so because of this mindset generally it makes it a kind of difficult for pharmacists to have a push because people don't think they are supposed to be given such privilege. But this time around, globally we have come together and we have resolved that all of these, all important, uh, you know, uh, roles that we play that people do not recognize. Is it possible for us to actually sing our own song? Is it possible for us to actually drum it up for the authorities to know that we do so much? But we appreciate it less. Okay. okay. So, sir, so, um, just on a final note, yes. um, I want to ask: How do pharmacists then, you know, manage the stress that comes with being right one hundred percent of the time mm. when it comes to administering drugs to patients? Thank you very much. That is another very important question. I wish we had all about one hour to discuss this yeah. <laughs> very, very topic. We have very little but time it's very because short. we are about okay. to round up. The thing is this. When we talk of trust, yes. you don't just trust. Yes, you trust based on precision and consistency that this person has rendered this particular service over and over and it has been the same. Mm. When I say go and take paracetamol, you don't ask questions. You go and you go and take it because you have known over time that you have taken it over and over and it has been like that. How do we get to be that precise? You know, they say pharmacists are between number one to number five, the most trusted professionals mm -hmm. all over the world. Yes. Why? Where, where the error margin in the training of a pharmacist is very low. Mm. I want to believe we all understand what they call error margin. Yeah. Mm. The, 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 the extent at which you must not make mistake. mistake. We know the error margin in pharmacy is almost the highest mm. in the whole world. And we know, and you too can imagine it, if a surgeon, for example, makes a mistake in the theater, he's likely going to have one casualty per time. Yeah. Is that not it? Yeah. If a pharmacist makes a mistake in his laboratory, the casualties could be in 10 million. Yeah. You know, by the batch that you release to the whole world, if that batch has any problem whatsoever, whoever that takes it from wherever they are, they have problem. Mm -hmm. So pharmacists are not allowed to make mistakes in whatever way. And the training actually gives us like that. Mm -hmm. Because when you have been trained, you have been trained all around. Mm -hmm. In fact, we normally say we are overly trained, mm -hmm. but underutilized. Okay, okay, we so let's, let's just <laughs> stop there because unfortunately we are we'll out time. of time. Thank you so much for coming on the conversation once again. And we do hope we continue this conversation sometime in the future. Thank you yes, very much for having me. Thank you so much. And by extension, that's it for the conversation this morning. You could watch a recap of the conversation by our website at www.tostvnetwork.com. You could also connect with us on our various social media platforms on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram um, at TOSTV Network to drop comments, concerns, as well as questions. And you could watch a recap of uh, the conversation as well as other programs by TOSTV Network via our YouTube page at US TV Network. Don't forget to like and subscribe. As always, I am Sagir Ibrahim. And I'm Adesua. So I'll see you. Thank you so much for joining us today. And please remember to always stay safe.